If you have your Bibles, open up to Luke chapter 1, beginning verse 67. There are so many things we value here at First Baptist Church. We value depth, we value uh, joy, we value excellence, we value so many things. But I hope we never get past valuing coming to the Lord with the faith of a child. And every year when we get to be led by our children in worship, and we're led by our children in worship regularly, but we particularly get to be led in worship by our children in this way, uh, in their language, uh, in, in their music. Uh, it's a reminder to me of the, the fact that not only did the Lord Jesus say, let the little children come to me, but also a reminder that he's called each of us to have the faith of a child. And so children, thank you for what you did for my own faith this morning and leading us in worship. We're uh, grateful. And, and we've not heard the last of them this morning either. So for those of you who are here for them, please don't leave. Uh, to hear them one more time, you have to listen to a brief sermon, okay? So <clears throat> I don't make the rules, okay? That's just how it works. As you're opening there to Luke chapter 1, verses 67 through 79, Luke 1, 67 through 79, I want to encourage you all to be here this Wednesday night. Uh, beginning at 5 o'clock, we have our annual lasagna for Lottie. So we have Joyce's famous lasagna for Lord's Sup- I mean, for our church supper that night. And, um, and uh, all, every dollar you give will go to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering that night. So uh, whatever you're normally doing, you can pay what you want for lasagna. So you may say, what is Joyce's lasagna worth to me? And we'll have a record giving to that because it's so delicious and so good. So hope you'll be here. We'll also be hearing from uh, the Brooks family who are getting ready to deploy with the IMB. So we're going to get to hear at 6 o'clock in the chapel from some missionaries, IMB missionaries. So you'll be able to put faces and names with where your Lottie Moon dollars are going. So I want to encourage you to be here this Wednesday night for Lasagna for Lottie. Well, if you have your Bibles open, do me a favor and stand with me for just a moment out of, the reverence, out of reverence for the reading of the words of our God. Luke writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in such a way that as the words on this page are being read, God himself is speaking to us. Beginning of verse 67. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us In the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, in the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and sit in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way peace. Let's pray together. Oh God, thank you for these children. Thank you for this gospel they've pointed us to today. And oh God, I ask if you would please open our hearts and minds today to receive your word. And God, I pray we would be changed by your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I think it's an important question for each of us to ask ourselves, not just on this morning, but perhaps every day. But it's especially pertinent, I think, at this time of the year, uh, here at Christmas time, that we maybe evaluate our own hearts and lives and ask ourselves this question What does it mean to be devoted? Uh, what does it mean to be devoted? I, I would argue that Zechariah here represents a man who exemplifies devotion to the Lord, a man who's devoted to the Lord. And in this passage, we see him devoting his son, John, who we call John the Baptist, devoting him to the Lord, giving him over to the Lord as the Lord commanded. What what can we learn from this song, Zechariah's song, about devotion to God? Very, very briefly today, I'm going to show you three points from this passage about being a devoted follower of Christ. Here's the first point. Devoted followers worship God. 
Now, one thing I, I want you to remember is that when the angel Gabriel came to Zechariah and told him that his wife was to have a son, his initial response was to ask questions. He, he immediately began to say, how is this possible? And obviously this was something that the angel recognized was reflective of a heart that was not fully trusting in the Lord. And so Gabriel gave Zechariah the sign that he was asking for, and that sign was for him to not be able to talk until the child was born. So God closed up the vocal cords of Zechariah, and he wasn't able to talk. So he came out of the temple where he was serving the Lord there, and he wasn't able to speak until his son was born. And so here in Luke chapter 1, as the text has progressed, John has been born, and, 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 and Zechariah had written out on a tablet, his name will be John, because people were confused about his name. And as soon as he wrote that out, his tongue was loose, the Bible said, and immediately, the Bible says, he began to bless the Lord. And then Luke gives us a picture of how he does that, what he says. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. E each of these four songs, this is the second of four songs in Luke chapters 1 and 2, they each have a Latin name that's been given to them from the first line. And this one is called the Benedictus, blessed be the Lord God, Benedictus. Immediately, when his mouth is opened, what does he immediately begin to do? He begins to worship God. I ask you this question, are you dedicated to worshiping the Lord? Do you live a lifestyle of praise unto God? Is your life dedicated to blessing the name of the Lord? Zechariah's was, and it's a sign of his devotion. Not only do devoted followers worship God, but second of all, let me tell you this. Devoted followers believe God. Or they put faith in God. They trust God. Devoted followers believe God. Uh, beginning in verse 70. In, in, in verses 67, 68, and 69, we see Zechariah praising the Lord. But he begins to define this praise, beginning in verse 70, showing his trust and faith in God. Verse 70, he tells how God spoke by the prophets of old. Verse 71, he talks about how God promised that he would deliver his people from their enemies. In, in verse 72, Zechariah says, In mercy, God will remember his holy covenant that he swore to Abraham. In verse 73. And then in verses 74 and 75, Zechariah says, He is doing this in order that his people might serve him without fear in holiness righteousness now this is all these are all fascinating things to say just because you've had a baby born all these recollections of God's promises but what is he saying he's saying that God not only in John but in the life of his nephew Jesus God is fulfilling the promises he made to Abraham he is fulfilling the promises he made to David he is fulfilling the promises that he made to his people. Now, Zechariah's faith wasn't perfect. In fact, Gabriel silenced him because he wasn't believing the Lord there. But it was there nonetheless. It might not have been perfect, but it was certainly complete. He trusted the Lord. And here, as a sign of his devotion, Zechariah is showing that he trusts God. I want you to know this morning, some of you may feel like to be a devoted follower of the Lord, you need to have perfect faith. Uh, perfect faith. But I want you to know, even God's choicest servants sometimes struggle to believe what God has said. Here in this context, I hope and pray that you'll remember that there is nothing more important than trusting God. And though your faith may not be perfect, it can be complete through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Devoted followers worship God. Devoted followers believe God. And finally, devoted followers obey God. D devoted followers obey God. H hear what the Bible says, what Zechariah says under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, beginning in verse 76. He turns his attention from a direct praise to God and he begins to prophesy concerning his own son. What does he say? And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways. And he goes on to talk about how God will use his son's ministry. You see, Gabriel, the angel, had told Zechariah that John would be dedicated to the service of the Lord. And now as this song of praise to God concludes, Zechariah is obeying the Lord. He's doing with his son what God told him to do. 
Simply put, Zechariah's faith, Zechariah's worship, Zechariah's devotion to the Lord is resulting in obedience. He is doing what God said to do as he commits here to raise his son in the way that God commanded. Listen, my friends, I want you to know something. Sometimes we overcomplicate what it means to be a faithful follower of Jesus Christ. We think it means we need to be a super Christian or we need to have some intense theological understanding or we think it must mean that we need to have some sort of ultra spiritual experience or something like that. Listen, let me tell you, there is no clearer sign of our devotion to the Lord than simple obedience. Simple obedience. If God says it, we do it. There's no clearer sign of devotion than that. Uh, Let me say this. During this Advent season, I want to encourage you to consider what it might look like to grow in your devotion to the Lord, your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'd be remiss not to tell you that the only way to be a truly devoted follower of God, the the only way to worship God, uh, the, the only way to trust and put faith in God, the only way to obey God truly is to do it through the gift we received during the first Christmas, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Zechariah was worshiping the Lord. That's why Zechariah was putting faith in the Lord. That's why Zechariah was obeying the Lord. That's why Zechariah believed God was keeping his promises because he was bringing his Messiah into the world. Brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you today to put your faith and trust in Jesus. If you've never done it before, or if you need to refresh your faith and trust in Jesus as a Christian to be a more fully devoted follower of Christ, I encourage that you keep your focus on Jesus during this Christmas season. Be a devoted follower of Christ. Increase your devotion. It's simpler than you might think. Through Christ, we worship God. Through Christ, we believe God. Through Christ, we obey God. Listen, these children have done such a good job today leading us in worship. And I want you to know to do any of these things, to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, it takes nothing more complicated than the faith of a child. This morning, if you're not a believer, you need someone to talk to, you want to pray uh, to know more about Jesus, I'll be standing right down front or I can catch you after the service. Uh, Second of all, you may be a Christian already and you you may just want to say, Pastor, I need to grow in my faith and being led by these children and hearing this word about Zechariah has inspired me to do that. Would you pray for me? I'll be right waiting on you down front. And finally, you may be looking for a church home. What a joy it would be for me to talk to you today about what it means to be a member here at First Baptist Church. After this prayer, I want to invite you to come. Let's pray together.